And we are back. You are listening to Gadfly Radio. I am Ben Boychuk, one-third of the Gadfly Triumvirate, sitting in for Martha Montalongo. Martha and a uh, third member of our trio, John Seiler, are, are away today, so you just got me. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and um, with us right now, uh, again, Ovik Roy. He is a senior fellow in health policy at the Manhattan Institute, policy advisor of the Heartland Institute, and a blogger at Forbes, where he is proprietor of the Apothecary blog. And we're talking about the Supreme Court arguments uh, over Obamacare this week. Uh, three days of arguments, sort of an un- unprecedented uh, series of arguments on a unprecedented law. So uh, we were we were talking before the break about the individual mandate, which was the uh, which was the big show today. And uh, the the justices, I mean, this really turns on the question of, you know, can the government force people? into commerce? Can they force people to, to buy something? And that's really what it's about. I mean, it's one thing to say that Congress can, you know, prevent farmers from, from consuming the wheat, that, that, that crazy case during the New Deal where, where, you know, the Commerce Clause allows Congress to regulate, uh, the, you know, the use, the growing of wheat, even though it doesn't necessarily cross state lines. Okay. Uh, but this is this is very different from that, and that's that's what they were uh, arguing in court today. So, so that's really the question, then, right, Ovik? I mean, you know, uh, can they force us to buy the th- to buy insurance or not? Yeah, and and so what it comes down to is the the, the liberals are arguing that it is activity because uh, it is economic activity when you choose not to buy health insurance because you're eventually going to consume health insurance uh, health care, and if you don't buy health insurance, you're not going to pay for it. Uh, Correctly, or pay for it at all, and that's why the government has an inter- uh, interest in um, in in forcing you to buy health insurance because the federal government already forces hospitals to take care of you uh, if um, if you don't have insurance. So since the government already forces you to do that in order to uh, to make sure that hospitals don't grow broke, the government also has the right to force you to. Uh, to buy health insurance to pay for that health care, which is a bit of a circular argument. So just because the government makes a stupid law doesn't mean the government can do something unconstitutional to make up for the fact that it's passed a stupid law. But there you go. Right. And uh, the justices, I was, I was reading the New York Times story during the break, and the, the justices seem to come up with a series of questions. Well, if okay, if you can make people buy health insurance, what else can you make them buy? Uh, Chief Justice Roberts asked if the government can compel the purchase of cell phones. Uh, Justice Alito asked if, uh, if if the government could force people to buy burial insurance, um, you know. And then there's this this funny argument about well, uh, if if health care is going to be the domain of the federal government, can the federal government force you to buy uh, broccoli, uh, things like that? Um, so I, I guess I guess it's partly going to turn on that. Um, uh, if if not an individual mandate, then then what? I mean, surely there. See, this is part of the other. This is the other part of the argument, right? The, the the individual mandate is is a is a brutal way of of getting what what the government wants. What are some of the alternatives then, if not an in an individual mandate? The alternatives to the alternatives for getting the government to to do what to, to lower costs. To yeah, to get everyone to have yeah. health care, to lower costs, to all that stuff that that Congress thinks it can do. So the federal government could raise taxes on everyone to thereby fund health care, health insurance for everyone, kind of like they do with Medicare, but just make that universal. You could have Medicare for all. You could have a sim- system similar to Obamacare's exchanges where you subsidize health care purchased on the private market, but again, you make it universal and just say we're going to raise everyone's taxes in order to fund Obamacare's uh, Medicaid expansion and the creation of these Medi- uh, Obamacare exchanges. So uh, if uh, if 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 you do that, then what's the problem, right? So the, the, that's the issue. Is you can raise taxes on everybody and 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 do it that way, but if you if you force people to buy insurance, that is uh, something the government has never uh, forced anyone to do before. Right. Now uh, the Manhattan Institute just uh, put out a paper by Richard Epstein and David Hyman. Great uh, paper. That, right. It discusses how Obamacare damages the market for private insurance. And that becomes especially relevant if the mandate is struck down. What, tell us why that is. Yeah, so if the mandate is struck down, then all of these aspects of Obamacare that drive up the cost of health care are, uh, are going to basically destroy the private insurance market. So um, 
Right now, the, th the key thing to understand about the uninsured population, there are 50 million people who are uninsured. 55% of that 50 million are people who are under the age of 35, so relatively healthy, relatively young people. For th those people under current law, and certainly under Obamacare, uh, they have to spend a lot more for health insurance than they actually consume in health costs because they're young. They probably don't have, you know, unless you get hit by a bus or something, right? right. The typical 30-year-old 30, 30 isn't going to really do, spend a lot of money on health care except maybe the annual checkup. So those people are being forced to spend a lot more on insurance than they actually pay for in health care. And that's why a lot of young people are uninsured because they look at, they look at it and say, you know what? Insurance is really expensive. It's like 500 bucks a month maybe or 300 bucks a month depending on where you live. Uh, but I'm not going to consume that much health care, so I'm going to risk being hit by a bus and go without it because it's just too expensive. Right. And uh, Obamacare makes that worse because, for, for example, Obamacare requires insurers to charge only three times as much to its oldest uh, clients as it does to its youngest clients, even though older people can consume as much as six, six times as much health care as a young person. So in other words, the law forces young people to pay more for insurance so that middle-aged people and older people can pay less for insurance. And if you do that, but you don't have an individual mandate forcing those young people to buy health insurance, right. it's going to be even be more, more worse of a deal for, uh, for young people to buy insurance. Right. We're coming up on a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what to expect from tomorrow's arguments. You're listening to Gadfly Radio. I'm Ben Boychuk talking to Alvik Roy from the Manhattan Institute. We'll be right back. Don't go away.